friends this is yet another episode of my saturday wisdom this time it is about a very socially relevant subject that of net neutrality currently there is very little understanding of the subject however i hope you will be a little wiser on the subject after this presentation network neutrality most commonly called the net neutrality is the principle that the internet service providers must treat all internet communications equally and not charge users at different rates based on the content the website the platform application type of equipment source address destination address or the method of communication none of this should matter in the costing hence understanding net neutrality is very very important however it does not seem to be a priority list for most of us or the politicians probably because it's not well understood should internet access be legally classified as an opt in service or a public utility now should the broadband internet service be regulated as a public utility similar to the way we regulate our electricity gas and water supply the way they are regulated should we have a dumb network with little or no control management of its user user patterns or it should be intelligent enough to filter as one may decide who should regulate such services for the record Tim Wu, a Columbia Law School professor, first coined the term net neutrality. Should we not have an open, equal internet for everyone, regardless of the device, regardless of the application or platform used, and regardless of the content consumed? A public information network will be the most useful. if all the content all the websites all the platforms such as mobile devices video games consoles etc are all treated equally does it exist today are not isps internet service providers restricting or limiting the bandwidth based on specific applications and services simply put to serve their own interests the isps must not restrict access or change the access speeds or block the content for some users they must not make special arrangements with a few companies to give them improved network speeds or better access what benefits accrue if we follow net neutrality for one information freedom free speech and idea sharing can be ensured the isps can be restricted from deciding what their customers see access or read on the internet next business freedom and customer choice can be ensured obviously if access to some sites and content is blocked a competitive disadvantage may arise conversely such companies may have to pay more if they need access that is where the trouble is net neutrality then seeks to provide a level playing field by keeping the large and influential companies from forming cartels that promote their products or services it can also uphold standardization 
of internet data transmission which is essential for its growth finally greater innovation can also accrue as a benefit smaller companies will obviously benefit assuming the isps play favorites new startups and new technology based companies will always be at a disadvantage either pay more or be blocked out net neutrality regulations are referred to as common carrier regulations these regulations do not block all the services opt in opt out services exist on the end user side and filtering is done on a local basis such as filtering sensitive material that may be consumed by minors the 2018 regulations probably the best guarantee free and open internet and are expected to help the culture of startups and innovation the telecom regulatory authority of india or tri prohibits internet service providers from offering or charging tariffs that are discriminatory both for data services on the basis of content and also entering into contracts which may have similar outcomes there are financial disincentives for breaches of this regulation there is an exception however it does not ban differential pricing in case of public emergency or when emergency services are required still there are number of examples that can be cited where net neutrality has been violated facebooks internet.org we all know include airsells wikipedia zero along with airsells free access to facebook and whatsapp airtels free access to google and reliance's free access to twitter are all such examples even facebook's free basics program is a violation based on its provision of free of cost access to dozens of sites in collaboration with telecom operators when you act, give free access you also block several sites the problem is complex since communication technology itself allows several possibilities the cable and digital subscriber line dsl operators may have a legitimate right to manage their networks for maximum efficiency some isps already prioritize some traffic to maintain quality of service now what is important is that it cannot result in discrimination whether one connects to netflix or to internet archive or a friends blog the isp has no business to treat them differently they are all the same many isps have in place a two tiered internet service model they charge a premium fee for priority placement and faster speeds across the courier network pipes that they own it means that isps legally create internet fast lanes which give preferential treatment for certain companies to promote their own services to their customers all this of course comes at a price such services could result in market distortion that may not be in public interest it could even hinder innovation and harm such companies that are not part of it on the other hand isps and mobile service providers also have zero rating schemes you must have heard about all that in places where customers are not charged for data use 
on specific websites and services. Websites and services are then zero rated and receive more traffic. Actually, the consumers are given a choice of using a slower dial-up internet service or pay a premium price for faster speed over broadband coaxial cable, DSL or fiber optic services. Have we not seen seemingly good limited data plans? The catch, however, is that they come with their own affiliates or popular sites. What is promoted on these sites can change perceptions and even create motivated thought processes. What will all this be changed or transforming into when 5G arrives is anybody's guess. I'll speak to you about 5G in course of time. Can net neutrality reduce the ISP's incentive to build out the internet or reduce competition in the marketplace and raise operating costs which then would pass on to the users. All said and done, net neutrality is essential for a democratic exchange of ideas and knowledge, for promotion of ethical business practices, fair competition and innovation. Most affected if net neutrality is not the norm are the general public, you and me, besides human rights organizations, NGOs, consumer rights advocates, software and technology companies. Large internet consumers or com companies like Netflix, Yahoo, Twitter, Microsoft and Amazon. They too can be affected. What can be done? An intelligent combination of policy instruments will help political and economic objectives central to the network neutrality debate. Add public opinion, it can then be very effective. We must aim for an open internet where full resources of the internet and means to operate on it should be easily accessible to all the individuals, companies and organizations without any underwritten statement. Open internet will ensure net neutrality, open standards, transparency, lack of internet censorship and low barriers to entry. On the other hand, a closed internet is where established persons, corporations or governments favor certain users, uses, restrict access to necessary web standards. They artificially degrade some services or explicitly filter out the content. It is up to us to decide what we desire in our country. All that may be required in certain emergency situations and we are not talking of emergency situation in this presentation. Friends, I have tried to address the issue of net neutrality in simple terms and hope you are now better informed. Technology has been changing fast and the shelf life seems to be just about three years before you become obsolete. Keeping abreast of it is as important as any other activity that we have. Friends, having ended here, I would wish all of you a very nice weekend. Signing off for today with a promise that I will be back the next Saturday with another Saturday Vista episode. Until then, thank you, Dhaniwad and Namaskar.